I have a rescue dog I got uh, four or five years ago. He's uh, has become a member of my family and changed our lives over here. And um, one of my one of my business partners had uh, to put down his dog today after twelve y- twelve years. His dog went to puppy heaven. And so it's a sad day for all of us because we know how much he loves his dog. So here is your trivia question. I hope you have your fingers on the keys so you can try to win this 50 bucks for me. All right, so in honor of my guy Silas's dog, Cotton, who went to puppy heaven today, according to the American Kennel Club, what is the top breed in the nation for the 25th consecutive year? Greg. Greg got it. Lab. First on deck. There's a lot coming in though. Lab. Beagle. It's all lab, right? It's all lab. Great dogs. Anyway, we said goodbye to my old cotton today. But Greg, you just won a $50 gift card from us at Trade Thirsty. So you can post your email in here. We'll grab it and we'll get that out to you in the morning. Um, so back to business. Let me get my recording started. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome, everybody, to our final leg of the Trade Thirsty three-man event in the September 2016. Ted Posobiec is on deck now. He is with winvesting.com. Been friends with those guys for a really long time over there. So, Ted, I'm going to let you mic up real quick, and we'll do an audio test before we pass you the mic for your one hour here. How do you hear me, Janine? How do you hear me out there, everybody? Hey, one, it's two, Jeanette. There. Welcome, welcome, Jeanette. welcome. Hey, so... Um, so Word on the street top a uh, whale shark. A whale shark. It was above me, and that was oh my a God. that was not a a nice sight for me being in the water and it above myself, uh, and I'm hanging on a a, a line per se. <laughs> Holy crap! Well, let's just say you got you got um, uh, a lot of ambition there <laughs> to do that job in the first place, <laughs> and then to put yourself in in God's way like that. I mean, I'm just gonna it was say, a great good job. For you, good for great. you to swim out. And amen. <laughs> uh, all right. So, welcome to Trade Thursday tonight. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna give you the if you wouldn't mind starting a recording on your side, and uh, me, um, real quick, I'm gonna grab Dan and move him up so that we can. Make sure he can uh, handle yeah. uh, some of our uh, admin stuff over there real quick. That's uh, not him. Let's I see. don't see a recorder on my side here. All right, hang on. I'm about to give it to you. I don't oh, see okay. Dan in here, though. Uh, he's, he should be there somewhere. I just don't see his email. Hang on one second. I'm going to grab him because I want him to be able to record, too. Y'all, we're doing this all in the sake of making sure you... Uh, Let you guys get a copy of the recording and all the stuff that it takes to make this thing come out whiz bang. All right, I have upgraded him. And Dan, if you'll make sure that you are. Let me go back to you, my friend. Ted, let's change you up here. I'm going to make you the presenter real quick, and then I'm going to make you the organizer, and it's up to you to take it away, and you'll have one hour. Should be getting all those tools right about now. We see your screen for a second. I saw your big window image. I have the same one on mine. There it is. How to use volume spikes forecast profitable trades. We got you. Everybody see that okay? Questions. There we go. Good audio. Thanks. Audio is great. I'm going to mute. You have one hour. All righty. Well, welcome to uh, How to Use Volume Spikes to Forecast Profitable Trades. My name is Ted Posobiec, and I want to thank everyone for uh, sticking around this long, this late at night, or early uh, for this webinar presentation. Let's get started here. Let's take a look at a disclaimer here. I I just uh, go over what I am not. I am not a financial advisor. I am a full-time futures trader. 
uh, just remember there's risk in, in trading, so don't risk money that you can't afford to lose. And uh, just uh, trade safe, trade smart. Once we're done with this, taking a look at this, let's keep uh, rolling here. Uh, from working with thousands of traders over the last few years, uh, here's what I've learned from them, uh, learned about them and myself. Most traders have no idea what to do with volume. Uh, sure, they might know what volume is and how to read it on a chart, but they really don't know what to do with it. If they did, I believe 85% of the traders would be successful rather than the other way around. Volume speaks loudly, and it tells you what to do in most market situations, if you know how to listen. So today I'm going to teach you how to listen to volume and what to do with that information it tells you. Uh, this is not just going to be theory. I'm going to give you a very particular trade that I take almost every day at the open. Uh, once you see, uh, once I show you this, uh, you're going to have one of those uh, moments uh, you'll say, aha, or hit yourself in your head and say, Wow, why didn't I ever uh, see that before? And I, I do believe that this will forever change the way that you look at the markets. I know it has for me. Uh, it was a big, uh, a big change in the way that I was looking at, at everything in a whole. Uh, I think it had to be one of the uh, biggest uh, changing points in my trading career. Uh, this is going to be so simple and crystal clear. You'll wonder why you've never noticed it before. But first, who am I? Uh, and why should you care what I have to say? I'm just a regular guy like anyone else. Uh, I was a commercial diver uh, for over 20 years. Uh, I like to road my, uh, ride motorcycles. As you can see in the background, I am at a, uh, a motorcycle rally. Uh, love to do that now. I uh, also collect guitars and I play a little bit too. Uh, I've been trading stocks for almost 18 years. Not so much in the stocks anymore. I love my futures, and this is the reason why. The most important uh, reason for it is I love the lifestyle that comes with being a day trader in, out, few hours a day. Uh, before trading, uh, working in the oil field was uh, you would have some days or some weeks that you were working all the time, working hard, 10, 12 hours a day, uh, days on end. Uh, it could go in from days to months uh, at a time with no time on the beach. Uh, so that was a long time, long, hard hours uh, of being away from the family. Uh, today my idea of full-time is just two to three hours a day, and I get to focus on what's most important in my life. That's what I love about this. I host... Uh, E-Mini Insider Trading Room at Winvesting.com Monday through Friday uh, from 8.15 in the morning to 10 a.m. in the morning uh, Eastern Time. Uh, sometimes I open up the room a little bit early just to see what else, uh, if we can get something else going. Uh, but 8.15 to 10 is pretty much standard right there. Uh, here's what one of the students that I have uh, had to say about me and uh, what I have taught him. Ted Posobiec is a phenomenal trader and coach. He is truly driven to help his students achieve their personal goals. I was trading water with my trading for a long time, taking one step forward and two steps back. But Ted has helped me to turn that around by building on solid fundamentals. It's pretty amazing how quickly an account can grow when you're consistently profitable. Out of the last 20 trading days, I've had two losers, two break-even days, and 16 winners. My account is up over 50% in 30 days, simply by cracking out base hits. This is pretty exciting. Wouldn't have happened without Ted's help. Rick R. from Wisconsin. Well, that's enough about me. So let's get back into volume and how I can predict profitable trade setups at the market open. Uh, first, I want to define if uh, some of you might or probably already know, some of you might not, but uh, I want to define what I mean by the market open. Uh, the market open is the open outcry or regular trading hours. Uh, the market opens 
is different for uh, uh, agricultures, energies, equities, interest rates, metals, etc. Uh, I do trade energies. They they open up at nine o'clock. Uh, equities. 9.30, interest rates 8.20, metals 8.20, but I don't really get into agriculture. So if I don't know what I'm trading, or if you're not uh, trading any of these and you want to take a look at what time they open up, you can take a look at www.cmegroup.com trading hours uh, and uh, look up what time these open, and it'll also give you what time they close. Uh, Volume any open trade with a short setup. This is what I'll be going over right here. Uh, how I interpret what volume is telling me. A sharp increase in price and a sharp decrease, or I'm sorry, a sharp increase in price and a sharp increase in volume can mean that the bulls have exhausted. All the buyers have bought and starting to step aside, the sell taking over. This is a setup for a short entry. Again, the, what I'm really looking at here for for a short entry is a sharp increase in price and a sharp increase in volume. Two things to keep in mind. Uh, volume and the open trade for a short. In other words, let's go ahead and uh, get this a, a little shorter for you. This here would probably be easier to remember here, a big increase in price and a big increase in volume means that the market will probably drop and I look to go short. Here we have a chart and what I'm showing is this is an ideal. I really like to see a sharp increase in price like this. That's what I mean by sharp increase in price. And this is also a sharp increase in volume. What I'm looking for is volume to be twice the amount at least or close to twice the amount as the uh, previous one. And it, uh, when I'm watching this candle here, this volume here, this is what I'm looking at to see, make sure it's above this. So once we have the price, uh, increase in price and a sharp increase in volume, buyers have stepped out and the sellers come in and they take it down. Now we'll go and uh, talk about the long trade uh, with this uh, volume and open trade. A sharp decrease in price and a sharp increase in volume can mean that the sellers have exhausted. Now the sellers have stepped aside and the buyers have found value at that level and start to take control. This is a setup for a long. Sharp decrease in price and a sharp increase in volume. Uh, let's simplify that. Also, a big decrease in price and a big increase in volume means that the market is probably going to take off and I'm looking for a long. Here we go. Good example here again. Sharp decrease in price. Sharp increase in volume. The sellers have stepped out. And buyers come in. We're going long. Here's a simple way to remember everything. Uh, sharp increase in price plus a sharp increase in volume. Look for a short, up, up equals down. A sharp decrease in price and a sharp increase in volume, look for a long, down plus up equals up. Now you know what to look for. Uh, let's take a look at some charts. Uh, we're gonna go over some uh, charts uh, from today. Uh, but I do have some uh, pictures. These are just recently, 21st here. Uh, I've got gold. I trade gold, CL, NQ, and occasionally I trade ES, but uh, this works on just about any market that I have traded. Uh, actually, it does. Uh, I shouldn't say just about. It, it works on everything. Here we have, I've got this one here set up. We have an increase in price. Beautiful here. This here's the this here is the open candle. Uh, this here just happens to be the, se the second one. It's really good. I just noticed that, too. Uh, and then we have a sharp increase in volume. This one here would be also a sharp increase in volume here, here. Uh, but this one here is one that stood out. 
So I'd be looking at getting in this one here. Price came up short. I don't know what happened here. Uh, if I had gotten in, it would have been up in here. But did price come down? Don't know. This is after the fact. But with this one here, if I had gotten in here and got taken out, still waiting for this second one up here, definitely get up, take a look to the left to see what I have, uh, if I have any support resistance. Love that uh, uh, price coming up into uh, support or resistance as I'm looking to the left. Uh, and it does work here. Comes up, comes down. I try to get in on the candle that is formed with it. If I do not get into it, I, can, I look to see if there's a possibility to get in on the close. Each person is different. Yes, uh, actually it does work on currencies uh, and 6E. Yes. I use Ninja Trader right now. But uh, if you can't catch it on the first side, wait. See, if, uh, Especially if you have uh, support resistance or even a trend line. It will help you get in, help you decide whether you want to take that trade or not. Uh, here we have another one at 22nd, and what we have here is a uh, these green arrows, red arrows. This is my indicator that shows a volume spike happening. Sometimes it'll show you the direction that you want, uh, that you're looking for. This is a time indicator, and this red line right here is 829. This is the candle I'm looking at. I don't really want to look anything to the left, although there are things I'm looking for, support resistance areas or uh, swings, uh, to determine whether I want to take this in the other direction. With the candle here of the rules that I said, uh, that I just put out, somebody tell me if I would uh, take this trade at all or uh, what direction would I take it if I were to get into the trade? Kelsey, no. You're right. I would not take this as a trade. Exactly. There is no sharp increase in price. Actually, if you compared it to this to this, you could you could say it. It does go up. It does come down. There is, we do have movement both ways. Uh, look at coming straight down. Look at the volume. It's not uh, twice as big as this one here. This one here is actually more volume than this one. So this one, I would not have taken that as a trade. It definitely would have to come up higher. No sharp increase. Uh, really, that's not that's not sharp enough. Now, if it came in on this one, yeah, I like that. I like that better. Even this candle. Here we have another one. And with the rules that I give, where would I do? What would I do? Would I get into this trade or stay out? What direction? Uh, Dave, yep, uh, no, I would go short. That's a setup for a short. Uh, Dave had an, a question there. Do I look for it as a trend change? Uh, I look for uh, not so much a, as a trend change, but as a, a way to get uh, anywhere from 3 to 20 ticks, depending on the market. Sometimes it will trend change. Is it at a double hot? Do we have a double top, double bottom? So there's a yes there, and then there's a no there. I can go both ways with that. What's to the left? Do I have a, a significant uh, uh, double top or double bottom coming in? That's, that's what I'm looking for. I would have taken that short, preferably right in here. Had it come down, uh, this, this candle here looks like it probably did move up and down. Uh, three to five ticks. If I get taken out, which I doubt I, I doubt I, I would have gotten taken out of this, uh, I can hop back in 
on this candle here, still looking for that short, and I'm going to almost positive it was something to the left to let me know that it would be good to get in there. Uh, CL. Now here's one that's a little different. We've got a doji here. We do have significant move. We do have significant uh, volume. When I get something like this, I really like it a lot, but I like to, like to kind of stick around for the next candle to open to see what direction it's going to go. Uh, if I don't get in on this candle, which more than likely I've already been in it one, at least once, I'm taking this down. The reason for the price, you don't see a color here, but price opened up here, came down here, went all the way back and moved. So there is a big price move, even though it's a doji. It is definitely bigger than this move and this move here. But I'm only looking really prior to the prior candle, not uh, going back any further to the left. With the volume spike right here, this is telling me the arrow might be telling you to go long, but I'm looking at the, everything overall. When was the last time it came down? When was the last time it came up? So I'm looking at the immediate up or down. I look at this and I'm saying short. We are kind of coming down on the trend. If you run a trend line down here, I could have probably more likely to have shorted it right up here. Visualize that coming down. I want to get into... Uh, I got an ES chart. Uh, we've got NQ. Here again, the time indicator is going to is uh, going out five minutes prior to the hour opening. This is the 8:29. This is the 9:30 uh, candle. I do get the movement up and down here. Not sure what way it was actually going. Uh, if I had taken it long, definitely would have been out, but this is what I'm looking at. For this open here, I'm not really looking at this. Later on in other trades, like here, I'd be looking at this more than I am this here. I'm watching how fast this is coming up, how fast this is going up or down. I use a one-minute chart. Uh, would work very well on a two minute all the way up to five that I know of whether uh, I don't use it on anything else like that uh, anything faster than that the uh, the charts that I mainly use uh, that I only use for this is the one minute chart uh, again I have looked at it on a one minute up to a five minute and as long as you can read volume on it this would work uh, as going for percentages, how often the trade works, I go by a week-to-week -week or every two weeks uh, percentage rate. So as uh, the lowest I've ever gotten through a week is uh, uh, 65%, and the highest that I've ever gotten for a week is uh, 84. Almost hitting 85, but 84. Uh, this week we're in the 70s. Uh, for the last two weeks on the 70% area. Not every trade is going to work out. Uh, learning the setup, practicing the setup, practicing your entries all makes a big world of difference. So with this, this uh, trade here, what direction did it go first? Uh, we opened up here, came down here, definitely if this pushed down here, uh, did it come up here? Taking a look at what's happening here, uh, I would have gone long. Uh, that one would not have worked for me. I can say, yeah, I would have gone short, but at first, I, at first glance, uh, right now, I'm going to say it came down here. It was red, and then I tried to get up. Now, if it did go, I did get in on this candle here, I would have gotten some points, uh, some ticks coming up. Here's a, a, an actual volume spike trade that I did take. Uh, this was on the 27, uh, 27th here. And I 
started taking these after after the fact, after thinking about it, uh, and from here on, I, I want to take these uh, the photos of these uh, trades here. This was the volume spike, uh, volume definitely a volume spike, but this volume really grew up high right here. You can see where I got in, and it pushed down a little bit further. Uh, that this is to show an example of I did get in. My stop wasn't hit, uh, and, and it went up. This was actually my first target, and I ran my stop here for the second one. Uh, that's where I got uh, taken out. Hit my first target, tightened up my stop uh, to get out. But that's, that's an actual volume spike trade. If I had gotten taken out here, I would have definitely tried to get back in because I know to the left there was, there was a level to the left. The uh, really, there's no significant. Uh, there's no real uh, good meaning here, other than I want to know what the high of the five minutes prior to the open or this red line. I have a high and a low. Are we going sideways? Uh, did we get a big spike prior to that? That's what that's for. And it gives me an uh, lets me know when I see this that I'm getting t ready for a. Uh, a trade that I that I'm interested in, regardless if it's a uh, uh, open trade or some other time. Here's an ES trade. You can see we have uh, definitely uh, movement here, up down. It did end up green. Could have gotten in right at the close of the candle to come down, but we did. You can see that we did have the uh, significant increase and decrease in price, or increase in price with an increase in volume, and price hammered down. It's a good move there. Look to the left. If you guys can uh, visualize what we have to the left here, you, uh, you, right there is where I'd be looking to get in. It's close to the top, maybe one tick a little lower, but it's smacked right into the the levels to the left. Here we have one. You see the line on the bottom? Way to the left, there was something. Something told me to put the line in there. Uh, it could even be the overnight low. So price comes down, volume goes up, smack. I'm trying to get in as close to this line as possible for that uh, ride up. It does come down and try to test it again. If, if I don't get in, uh, don't get everything out of this candle here, I really try to stay. I am going to tighten up as soon as I get the first target. I will tighten up to be better than a break even. Uh, but if I had just left it at the low here and right up, uh, no uh, further up than uh, the line here, that would have been a good run. I'm more of a scalper. If we have any questions on this, I want, do want to pull up a. Uh, uh, chart and go over the last couple uh, the yesterday or actually today uh, it's pretty late <laughs> uh, I want to go over some uh, trades that may or may not have happened today on a live chart well today's chart uh, if we have any questions I'll go ahead and answer some of those right now otherwise I'm going to go ahead and move to uh, the ninja chart I use a ninja platform I do use a one minute chart uh, I do a daily prep that we get into in the uh, course. Um, don't need a whole bunch of uh, indicators on my chart. I do use uh, some EMAs, but for this particular trade, this is all I need. I don't need to have a whole bunch of other things. I may use uh, some drawing, some lines here and there, but uh, I don't use EMAs or, S or any kind of MA. The only thing that I... I will use for this trade is the volume itself, the volume spike indicator. Uh, time indicator is not really necessary, uh, but it does help me vis uh, see a vision, a visual prior to the trade happening. So I know that when I see this here, I'm getting, I, I know that it's time for me to concentrate on the chart.
Let's see, is this my real chart? Kind of looks like that. Uh, see, that's why I'm on uh, gold here right now. Let's take a look at what uh, what gold did. Here we have a significant decrease in price, significant increase in volume. Not knowing what really went on to the left. May not have uh, may not have worked. Don't know what happened uh, in this candle here, whether it uh, went up. It did uh, slightly go down a little further, but as price as the uh, time went on, we did get a little better uh, movement here. Uh, price came uh, went up, came down here first, but where did the volume come in? Did the volume come in here, or did it come in as it hit here? Uh, we've already done the 27th there, so let me go to... Uh, Somebody asked about 6E. Um, we're on the 12 there, so let's go back to 820. If I don't have a... I am on 6E. Uh, 820, if I don't have the indicator out on it, what I would do... Have my line up. That would be that would be all I really need. Eight twenty. We have a significant increase in volume and price. Doesn't look like it came down too much. Uh, was there was news today, wasn't there? Eight thirty. Looks like there, were, there might have been a little bit of news move here. Let's go to another day. Could take a look at this at any of the, any of the markets open, uh, especially 6E. And let me find the time, 820. A twenty. Looks like it might be moving a little earlier. A twenty. Just come down. Up. A thirty-five. Right now, on these two days, I would say uh, they would be uh, losing trades. You do get some other better moves earlier. Let's go to, uh, I want to see what ES did today. ES, let's go, 9.30. Yeah, there we go. We have the uh, significant increase in price. And significant decrease in price, and we went long. That's very good there. GC. Looks like I've seen this before. Uh, 820, significant decrease in price. Price, uh, I would really like to have seen what happened here uh, if this candle actually pulled up. Uh, maybe, maybe not. 
it looks a lot better when you're doing it in a live market or a market replay. Price comes down here. Take it. Just look to the left. Do I have a uh, significant? Or do I have an area of uh, a point of interest to get in uh, for the long? Long would have been right here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Would it depend on your stop? If we have any questions from here, I will go ahead and answer those. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to continue on here. Okay. Today I've shown you how to listen to volume and what to do with that information. Oh, but it's only beginning. I've got three volume spike trades that happen throughout the day, not just at the market open. And I want to show you all three, along with some nuances, to make each trade even better. And I want to show you all three, uh, all three in three different uh, markets uh, uh, that I'll be going over. I get into that here. Uh, introducing the Volume Spiker On Demand Trading Course. The Volume Spiker. Uh, this is an online trading course. You'll get in-depth training on how to take these volume spike trades in multiple markets. Here's what you'll learn. The volume spiker overview is broken up into seven different modules. I'll show you how to set up your charts, how to find the right broker, the three different volume spike trades to look for, instructions to prep for the trading day. It's something that I do every day. It's the same, uh, same thing every day. It's a routine. Uh, module one, uh, platform setup. How to install and configure NinjaTrader if you don't already have it done. We'll go over ATM and trade executions, contract rollovers, and how to use market replay to master the trades and simulation. Uh, module two, chart setup. We'll go over the indicators the, using regular volume, volume spike indicator, the time indicator, and I'll show you what I use for checking news. Module three, the volume spike trade, what usually happens when a volume spike occurs. Uh, three different versions of the volume spike trade. There's one after the market I use, one after news, and one out of the blue. I'll show examples of each and explain how I trade them. I'll show you other things to look for to help confirm the trade. Modules four, five, and six go over three different markets. You'll learn the nuances of all three versions of the volume spike trade after the open, after news, and out of the blue in three different markets. In Module 7, one of my most, uh, I think is the most important uh, module of them all is money management. Uh, proper money management is more important than any trade setup. I'll learn how to choose the right daily profit loss limit for you and how to develop the discipline to stick with them. And when you register, you'll get the following three exclusive bonuses. Custom indicator, bonus one. The, uh, this is the same indicator I use to help find these trades in a live market. It helps eliminate the guesswork. It shows you when a volume spike trade is setting up and when to get in. This is a $500 value. Bonus two, 30 days in my trading room. Join my E-Mini Insider Trading Room Monday through Friday, 8.15 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time and trade the Volume Spike Trade with me live. You'll get personalized coaching in the room and there is no auto renew or strings attached. This is a $200 value. Bonus three, how to trade other people's money. Don't risk a dime of your own money. Learn how to trade other people's money with this online trading course how to pick the right prop firm, and how to pass the trading test. This is a $100 value. So how much is all this worth? If you were to add it all up, uh, the Volume Spiker On Demand uh, online trading system is uh, uh, valued at $997. Uh, Volume Spike custom indicator, $500. 30 days in my E-mini insider room, $200. How to trade other people's money, that's a $100 value. Total, 
value of the whole setup here is $1,797. I make well over 1500 a week on the volume spike trades. I have students making over 1000 a week with these same trades. If I price the course at $4,000, it could easily pay for itself in a month. But I'm not going to ask you for $4,000 or even $1,797. Why? Because I remember what it was like when I was in your shoes and I did not have a uh, predictable system like this one is. And predictable, uh, I was always staring at the chart, waiting for something to come in. There is one trade in there that you might, if it comes up, uh, I don't have to sit here at the, the computer all day. I know when my trades are happening. And to be completely honest with you, uh, I want to make this as affordable as possible because I know when you're successful with this system, you want to invest in more uh, advanced trading with me later. So I'm not even going to ask for $9.97. The price, that's the price of our course uh, on our website. Uh, if you sign up today, you'll get the Vime Spiker on-demand trading course along with all the bonuses for just $297. Uh, you can register now at www.investing.com vs. I'm so confident that you'll find success with this volume spike trade. I'm taking all the risks on me, backed by my 90-day 100% no BS guarantee. Sign up today. Check out the entire course. Trade at least one day a week over the next three months. Uh, using the strategies taught in the course, starting with just $5,000 in real or simulated account. After 90 days, if you have not generated at least $1,500 in real or simulated profits, show us the proof you took the action above and get a full 100% refund of the investment in your course. Uh, if you're still on the fence here, maybe this will help. I want to help you succeed, and I want you to learn. Uh, I really think you'll learn a lot faster if I'm there with you to answer the questions and show you how to uh, trade these markets in a live uh, situation, uh, in a live market, rather. Uh, so if you're one of the first 15 people to sign up, uh, the fast action bonus for the 15 only, triple the trading room, get 90 days in my live E-mini Insider trading room instead of 30. The Volume Spiker on-demand course. Go ahead, register now at winvesting.com vs. Here's what another uh, one of my students had to say about my trading. Uh, Ted worked with me, and I did exactly what he told me to do. Today, I can say my trading and confidence are a level I never thought I would achieve. Successful trading can be a life changer. And I want to say thank Ted Posobiec for changing my life. That's from Russ Nicely. Uh, I can't promise you this will change your life, but uh, when you sign up, I'll do my best to help you become a consistently profitable trader like I've done for Russ and other students. Take a look. Uh, register now at uh, winvesting.com. Uh, I want, would like to answer as many questions as I can. I see I've got some here. I'll answer the one about the green lines. The green lines let me go ahead and uh, the green lines here are just the five minutes prior. This is a time indicator. Thanks, Carlos. Kind of uh, Yes, I trade crews. That's my favorite one. That's 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 my favorite market is crude. Uh, I do trade uh, bonds also. Uh, CL is my favorite. I guess it would be CL, GC, NQ, bonds. <laughs> stop losses. Uh, uh, stop losses. We'll go with that first. Uh, some markets, I'll have, uh, NQ, I may have a 10 tick uh, stop, uh, but I'm using a 10 tick target with a, uh, a 10 tick target and a 20 tick target. Uh, 
gold uh, that will vary on a day-to-day -day basis just depends on what uh, the market's going at but I don't use any more than a uh, seven tick stop on that with uh, uh, targets anywhere from uh, five to twenty and I can push those targets out further once I go in. Normally I'm only using uh, two contracts. Uh, I will go to three contracts if I'm up for the, uh, the week or the day and that's on a day-to-day -day basis. I do I do go for 50 tick runs, but that go that's that's goes into later things. Yes, this does work on crude. Do that one just about every day. Uh, I was saying uh, this is. Uh, like trying to catch a falling knife and it's opposite. Uh, I wouldn't try to catch a falling knife but I dang sure try to catch a falling uh, price. It works for me. It works for a lot of other people I've taught how to use this trade. Uh, Dave, I am not in a trade. I, I really, I was uh, talking uh, to some other people today uh, I really do not like to be in a trade for more than uh, uh, 30 seconds is a long time. When that trade goes, I really want it to go in and I want to be out. Uh, but I have been in trades for 20, 30 minutes. Uh, don't ever remember being in a trade for an hour. But my, when I get in, I either know I'm in the right direction and it's going to hit all my targets, uh, both my targets, or... Uh, I get out as soon as possible. No, I do not take. Uh, I have other trade setups that I do. Uh, the uh, volume spike just happened to be uh, happens to come in uh, where I can actually take uh, one, probably three trades within uh, uh, two three minutes. Volume spike just happens to be one of those in that that particular time. Uh, to, yeah, today was uh, durable goods. There was news there. 6J. Uh, Dave is asking if you see a high volume spike with price, with no price spike. Dave, if I see that, I leave it alone. Uh, what David's saying is if I see a high, uh, and it doesn't matter, if I see a high volume and a short candle, I'll leave it alone. Or if I see a big price move and no volume, I'll leave it alone. I don't, do, I don't mess with it. Uh, Ted, this is like the five-minute trader. It's uh, yeah. Thanks, Dan. It's based off. It's not based off that. I'm looking for volume spikes. The normal trade size for a beginner, that depends on how much you have to risk. If, I'm, if I have a, a small account, I'm going to trade no more than two contracts and then uh, go for three to five ticks. When you're doing that, you build your account up, then you can go, if you can make consistently make three to five ticks, or five to ten ticks, take one or the other. If you can consistently make five ticks, fifty dollars a day, you can make a hundred. You can make two hundred. But you have to do that. You have to do the work. If you don't do the work, it's not going to help you. I can show you what I do. 
you have to go back and test it yourself. You have to see where what entries are best for you. Do you take the entry off the candle that's being formed, or do you go in after everything is done and closed? Uh, yeah, I believe you can do the course in the uh, SIM account that uh, Ninja offers. Yep. I try to wait, Dan, I try to wait for the, that candle to close. I, I do keep an eye on the timer down here to make sure, uh, try to get in as soon as it closes. Uh, if it pulls back uh, too much, I may just uh, cancel the trade. Uh, pulls down or comes back up. Uh, I, I, I don't like to see it come down more than 50% of the candle. Uh, I may pop the, uh, stop the trade or turn it around and go the other direction. If it, especially a candle like this, it goes all the way up. It comes back halfway or better. I'm going to take it back in the same direction because that, that's coming back down. And I, I'm sure you've all seen it before. And you'll see this in the a live account or a live market situation. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks very much. How does this? If you, I see, I don't do a breakout of a range. Uh, I take that back. I don't do breakouts the way normal people, you would know people do a breakout. I'm going to take this trade, if it's going long, I'm looking for that volume to come in where everybody else is going to be trying to go long. And there's a reason for that because breakouts normally fail the first time through. I'll take a breakout, but it's going to have to pull back first, break out with a pullback, then go in the direction. You're welcome, Tommy. Carlos, I think I've answered the uh, targets and stop losses. No more than 10 on a stop loss. They'll run 10, 7, 5, 4 uh, targets, anywhere from 3, 5, 10, 20, uh, 30, and 50, and anywhere in between. It depends on what I have available and what I am willing to risk on that particular trade. Yes, I'll help set up the uh, Ninja Trader. Uh, Ninja Trader has real good videos and stuff on their site themselves. Uh, how I learned to use it was once I got it on my computer and I started playing around with it. Uh, I had a lot of help with some uh, some other people, and uh, I can go through that uh, in between trades in, in the room also. I think it, it, there's a pretty good job of the uh, setting it up in the course. If you have any problems, you're in the room. I help people there too. There's something different about my room that uh, I, I don't see too often in other rooms is I offer to bring the open the mic uh, to people out there to ask their questions rather than typing them in. So you get more of the one-on-one. -on -one. I do use tick charts uh, on certain occasions. And uh, I think that's all I've got here. With that being said, does, uh, if there's not any more questions, I, I think I'm done here. Go ahead. Check us out at uh, winvesting.com vs. Register. All right. Thank you so much, Ted. Hey. What a great presentation. And uh, oh, I don't know, y'all y'all give it up, Ted. First time here on Trade Thirsty. You did a great job. And we are definitely going to invite him back in the future because it's a uh, great education. Uh, the offer's just right. Everything uh, everything fits. And we are thankful he spent this late part of his evening with us. Um, from where
where he is in the world. And I want to say thank you to everybody who spent this evening with us, period. A lot of you have been with us the whole night. And, uh, you know, it's not easy on a Wednesday night to come and sit in one of these webinars. But the education was fabulous. And I'm thankful that we, uh, we were all here together. Y'all have a great evening. Don't forget the offers. His offer is winvesting.com slash VS. Look for the recordings. We'll put those out with the offers in uh, probably about 24 hours, so be patient with us. And we hope that you will come and check us out in our next event, which is October 22nd, and that is a Saturday. So book your calendar right now and watch for the lineup. Y'all have a great evening. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Bye.